The district's annual Overnight Arts Festival, Mayor Muriel Bowser Presents Art All Night, is back this year to kick off the fall festival season. Art All Night is a two-night event that celebrates the district's performing, visual, and for the first time, culinary arts with the addition of Dine All Night. The free festival will be held across all eight wards on September 29th and 30th from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. More than 100 local artists and over 50 local restaurants and 20 main streets and business improvement districts are participating. Visit dcartallnight.org to map out your experience for the festival and for more information. Today on CityCast DC, it's the last installment of our fall guide and we're talking wineries and vineyards. You might not realize the DMV is a place that grows award-winning wine, but Dave McIntyre of the Washington Post is here to tell us which we should try for ourselves. Today is Wednesday, September 27th. I'm Julia Karen, and here's what DC is talking about. All right, so Dave McIntyre of The Washington Post, you have the coolest job title I've ever heard of, possibly one I want to steal, which is wine columnist. How does the DMV stack up when it comes to producing wine and making good wine? It stacks up really well, and it's getting better every year. And I'm really looking forward to trying some of the 2023s because the harvest is underway now. And if you visit wineries this time of year, you'll see all the activity, of course. But the growers are really enthusiastic about the crop so far. So it sounds like 2023 is going to be a banner vintage in Virginia and Maryland, as long as we don't get any hurricanes coming through in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Are there particular uh, types of wines from particular vineyards that you're excited about? Well, sure. If you're new to Virginia and Maryland wine, really ones to look out for for red wines would be Cabernet Franc is a variety that does really well here in the Mid-Atlantic. And a lot of Virginia and Maryland wineries specialize in that. And I hate to pick favorites, but just to <laughs> name one on each side of the Potomac, Barbersville Vineyards, which is down near Charlottesville, just north of Charlottesville, makes a wonderful Cabernet Franc. And in Maryland, one I've had recently that just blew me away was from Low Vineyards in Mount Airy. The 2021 vintage was just superb. Now, for white wine lovers, Viognier has a reputation, especially in Virginia, but it's become a little eclipsed lately by a grape variety called Petit Mansang, which is really exciting. It's very unusual. You don't find it elsewhere in the world in large numbers, and it gives you a very sort of tropical fruity wine, both bone dry and a really great sweet dessert wine, depending on how the winemaker wants to do it. So it's very versatile and it does very well in this uh, humid mid-Atlantic climate. Another white grape variety to look for would be Albarino and even Sauvignon Blanc, which is a little more, probably a little more familiar to many wine drinkers. A lot of the wineries around here are doing really well with that. All right, Dave, so what's a good way to get started and head out to a vineyard around here? Going to the local wineries is, is, is it's an experience. So the best thing I would recommend is pick maybe two or three wineries that you would like to visit in one day. That's plenty. And look at their websites. So know what wines they make. Match them with the styles you like. Know if they're having any events that day, like live music or food trucks or anything like that. And when you go... You might need to make a reservation, so the website will tell you that. Be respectful. This should be obvious, but don't be trying to just smash back as much wine as you can <laughs> in an outing. Don't be boorish. Remember that a winery is a private business. It's not a public park. A lot of people show up and think they're going to have their wedding there or their family reunion picnic and it's really not appropriate to do something like that. It is perfectly fine to hang out for a few hours and buy a glass or a bottle of wine to share there with your family and friends. But remember, too, that it's not a playground for your kids. If you are taking kids, be sure to look for kid-friendly wineries. Same with pets. 
and look after your kids if you take them. Don't just let them run around and the vineyards are not a track for them to run around in and play in or everything, especially at harvest time because there might be a lot of activity going on. So there's a safety issue there too. So we are getting to the time of the year, obviously, when people want to get out a little bit more, maybe want to explore. Tell us about some of the wineries in the region you're a fan of. Which places in Virginia are you excited about that people should go to? Oh, there are so many. Well, Virginia has basically, roughly speaking, two main wine regions, Northern Virginia and Central Virginia. So think Loudoun County, mm. but also Fauquier and Prince William have a few good wineries and Fairfax even. And then Charlottesville would be the other area of focus. And you could concentrate on that. You can do a day trip to Charlottesville. It's about two and a half hours from the Beltway, depending on traffic. And the new lanes on I-66 make that mm -hmm. a lot more easier than it used to be for several years during the construction. So if you were doing Charlottesville, you could do it in a day or you could do it an overnight and do it in two days. On the way down in Madison County, look for Early Mountain Vineyards is a great place to go. It's owned by Stephen Jean Case of AOL fame. And their winemaker, Maya Hood White, is just doing spectacular work with a variety of wines. Their Petit Mansang and Cabernet Franc are just ones definitely to, to look for. I already mentioned Barbersville, which has mm -hmm. a wonderful restaurant and a small inn that you can stay in if you reserve ahead, of course. That's north of Charlottesville and nearby you would have Horton Vineyards and Keswick are very close. And on the other side, west of Charlottesville, I would recommend King Family, Veritas, and Afton Mountain Vineyards especially. Stinson Family Vineyards is really good too. And south of Charlottesville, around Monticello, you want to look for Michael Schaap's Wine Works and several others. Pippin Hill is a very beautiful facility that's making some good wines and has a good restaurant. In Loudoun County, which of mm. course is a lot closer, they build themselves as DC's wine country. There are many really good wineries and new ones popping up all the time. Some of the older established vineyards would be Chrysalis, Boxwood, and Bro. One of the ones that I really like is Walsh Family Vineyards. And they just do, are, are doing some really nice wines. And they do an interesting thing, too, to look for. Every now and then on a Friday, they'll do what they call a bar takeover, where they'll invite another winemaker to come in and pour his or her wines for their guests. So there's this good community spirit where the winemakers are helping promote each other, which helps because with nearly 300 wineries in the state, it's hard to get to all of them. Mm, Especially in sure. one weekend. So there's a lot of things to look for. Do some web research and plan ahead. It's a little more complicated than just heading out 66 and down 29 and looking for the grape signs along the road to point you in a different direction. Oh, yeah. No, you're you're not doing a, a road trip and, and drinking and driving. We we are not no, fans of that. We're not, it, no, 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 no. That's another thing about tasting, spit. Mm. Use the spit bucket. Don't be shy about it. <laughs> For and sure. don't drink from it. Mm, definitely. All right, it's Mike here. If you have been listening to this podcast since the beginning, you've heard me talk about Car Care To Go before. Well, they just changed their name to Rhoda, R-O-D-A, but it is still the same great service. It's made exactly for folks like me who forget about an oil change until the blinking light reminds them, and then forget about it again after I go to the local garage and find out that they're busy. Rota simplifies all that. You make an appointment, they pick up your ride, and they bring it back a few hours later with the oil change, the wipers replaced, or any of the other hundreds of services they offer Complete it. I got a freebie the first time, but the price is pretty good even without it. They're accessible all over DC, and their work is covered by a great warranty to give you peace of mind. Instead of sitting in a waiting room drinking bad coffee, why not sit at home and drink your own coffee while they do the work? Get your first oil change for just $20.23. That's 2023, get it? With the code HEYDC20. That's H-E-Y-D-C-2-0. Sign up at Rhoda.com. That's R-O-D-A dot C-O-M with the code HEYDC20. Hey, parents! 
celebrate the joy of early learning with your little one at DC Public Library's annual Starfest. That's Saturday, September 30th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the MLK Library downtown. STAR stands for Sing, Talk, and Read, which are three key early literacy practices that will help your child grow into a confident learner. At this year's Starfest, you'll learn how you can add STAR practices to your daily routine. You'll also enjoy singing and dancing to live music, playing fun games, and more. At Starfest, DC families with young children can also sign up for the Books from Birth program to get a free book delivered to your home each month. Don't miss this year's Starfest on Saturday, September 30th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the MLK Library. Learn more at dclibrary.org forward slash star. That's d-c-l-i-b-r-a-r-y dot o-r-g forward slash s-t-a-r. Coming soon to Cleveland Park in D.C., the Loggia Towns at Uptown Plaza, which is a boutique collection of four brand new townhomes, with no two of them being alike. Located at Connecticut and Newark, each home features two to three bedrooms and dedicated outdoor space. Sales start in October. Visit UptownPlazaDC.com to join the VIP list and be the first to know when presale commences. Again, that's UptownPlazaDC.com, U-P-T-O-W-N-P-L-A-Z-A-D-C dot C-O-M. Sales and marketing by Urban Pace. So of the ones that you listed, obviously they all sound like incredible. I'm probably going to go check out the Loudoun County ones. Are there ones that you think are kind of more affordable? Say you're my age and you're 30 and you're like, mm, maybe a trip out to Charlottesville at, a, at an inn is a little bit out of our price range. What would you recommend in terms of something a little bit on the uh, more affordable side? Well, as, as far as visiting wineries, I think you can do that fairly inexpensively at a lot of places. So again, internet research, look for their the price that they charge for a tasting. What do you get for a tasting? Are you paying $15 to taste small samples of three, five, six wines? Do they have different flights where you can try perhaps a little larger sample of three or four wines, things like that. Maybe just buy a glass. Look for ones that have food. Chrysalis in Middleburg has what they call the Ag Center, where they um, sell pizza, they make the cheese there and everything like that. So that's a lot of fun. Early Mountain also has a good restaurant. I mentioned Pippin Hills Restaurant. Those aren't necessarily fine dining. Some of them might be. Barbersville is more fine dining. So... To buy a wine to bring home is not going to be cheap. Unfortunately, mm. the economics of wineries around here don't allow them to make quality wine and sell it for what most people would consider a reasonable price. So you should expect to spend $25 and up on a bottle of wine to either to drink there or to bring home. But I encourage people to do that and try them because it always helps to try a wine after you visit it and you're not there. You can get a better impression of it and whether it fits your style and your taste. Awesome. I definitely will be making a trip across the river to Virginia to try some of this out. Let's talk about some Maryland picks. Say you want to stay on this side of the river. What would your recommendations for Maryland wineries be? Sure. There are a few actually kind of close in. Montgomery County, for instance, we have Windridge Vineyards, which in Darnstown, which has a great view of the Seneca Creek, sort of off to the Blue Ridge, and very nice wines. Also in Montgomery County, Sugarloaf Mountain Vineyards. If you're going hiking on Sugarloaf Mountain, you'll pass the vineyard to get there. They make some very nice wines. Further up towards Frederick and Antietam, Big Cork is very good. And in Mount Airy, I mentioned low vineyards, but you have Linganor, which is famous for sort of sweet, fruity wines. They're a very old winery, but they're also doing some newer stuff with dry wines that are actually very good, including one of, that I'm fond of from the Saparavi grape. With, they're one of very few people in the Mid-Atlantic growing that. And in the same region, you have Black Ankle Vineyards, which is a very popular oh, place to visit. One of my favorites. Yep. And don't miss Old Westminster, 
Winery, which obviously is a little further north in Westminster. They also have great pizza, so you can hang around and have lunch and sip some wines. They do get crowded on weekends, I've noticed that, but the wines are terrific and there's a lot of variety there. The Vineyards of Dodon, which is near Annapolis, they make some very good wine. Their Sauvignon Blanc is, is quite good. And Port of Leonardtown, which is obviously in Leonardtown. It's only about an hour's drive from D.C. Very talented winemaker. They're racking up some awards. It's an unassuming little place right on the road, but a lot of character there and very good wine. Got it. All right. So say maybe you don't have a car or you don't have a friend who has a car and you got to be in D.C. proper. Any recommendations in the Diamond that you got for us? There's District Winery down in the yards near the Navy Yard that makes its own wines from, obviously, from grapes that are shipped in. They don't have a vineyard right there. They're in D.C.'s urban winery. There are some places, some restaurants and wine bars, too, that are paying attention to local. And that is a great change just in the last several years, because when I started as the Post wine columnist in 2008, there were articles that I wrote, a couple of them too, complaining that local restaurants didn't have any local wines. That is changing, thank goodness. And there are even some that specialize. There's a wine bar on the H Street Corridor called Irregardless. Two UVA grads own it, and they decided they wanted to specialize in Virginia wines. I think maybe they've added a few non-local wines to appease some of their customers, <laughs> but they're maintaining that focus. So that's an area to go to try some local wines. And some of the restaurants are doing things too from time to time. So they may not always have local wines on their lists, but they try to at least have one or two. Do you have a particular favorite that you go to year after year that you're just like, I got to go to this place in the fall. The food is good. The wine's really good. It's just a good time. I don't, but I will say the fall is a wonderful time to go because down, especially down around Charlottesville, you're in the foothills of the mountains and the colors on the trees in late October it's just spectacular and it's so nice to get away from traffic and just take a leisurely stroll I, I like to go the back roads I like to get off US 29 and go the more scenic route where you you'll see the signs for Civil War monuments and historical markers and things like that and maybe a little bit of Virginia that you haven't seen Dave McIntyre, thank you so much for these recommendations. Hope to share a glass of wine with you in the fall. Well, that would be fun. And I would just encourage all your listeners to uh, explore local wines uh, because it's an experience that you can't really have. You could still actually meet the winemaker at the tasting bar on a weekend where you won't really find that out in California at many places anymore. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on, man. You're welcome. Before you go, here's some quick news. With a government shutdown looming at the end of the month, the DC government is preparing for a possible surge in unemployment claims. DC's Office of Employment Services says furloughed employees are eligible for unemployment insurance the day the government shuts down, and that is when people should start submitting their applications. Meanwhile, in more unfortunate budget and unemployment news, Metro warns layoffs, a hiring freeze, and devastating service cuts are possible if the agency can't close a projected $750 million budget gap. Metro says it may have to start making cuts this winter, with them going into effect in July. The pandemic, inflation, and a decline in ridership have put Metro in this dire financial position. And lastly, Georgetown residents are calling for common sense readjustments to Georgetown streeteries, like demanding certain design standards and guidelines for seasonal removal of the outdoor dining setups. Streeteries were a prominent pandemic addition to Georgetown. Now, city planners are looking at ways to make them permanent, causing debates between restaurant owners, diners, and drivers. We did a whole episode about this. Listen to it. It's fabulous. By the way, what do you think of this newscast? Yeah, you. Do you listen to it every day? Is it important to you that we keep doing it? We're debating switching things up, and we want your input. 
click the really short multiple choice survey in the show notes to weigh in. I promise it's only two questions. It takes no time. Thanks so much. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend who you'd take out on a wine tour? Also, check out our show notes for an amazing written guide to local wineries from our newsletter. And subscribe to it at dc.citycast.fm to get similar content in your inbox at 6 every morning. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the city. See ya!